Okay, it's time for another live. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I'm just gonna grab my other screen working up here and make sure that it's all working. Okay, where are we? Here we go. Okay, it's working. Tickerhead joined. Good to see you, Tickerhead. Hope, you, hope you're well. First in the stream. I'm gonna plug that in here and I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna grab this so it's not in the way. And I think I've got everything sorted. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Matt Bailey. I'm the National Ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society here in Australia. It's a global whiskey club with a big Australian branch that hosts events, experiences, tours, dinners, masterclasses, our partner bars, and everything all around Australia. And also we release about 10 to 15 different single cast, cast strength, panel approved whiskies to our members every month in a publication we release every month called Outturn. Happy Outturn to, to you all as well. Outturn was just last Friday. As you, I did a stream on Friday night, but um, happy Outturn to you all. Uh, lots of things have already vanished, so we'll be doing a replenishment on the website shortly. More of the month has vanished. Uh, one or two of those uh, spicy and dries have, have, are very close to being gone. Same for chocolate bourbons, 72.79, which is very popular in the United States, actually, that one. Uh, and Velociraptor versus Xenomorph has gone, I'm afraid. And, of course, predictably, uh, 33.138 has vanished. That took all of about six minutes to go on Friday. So I do apologize if you missed out on that. But you should all have received your letter in the mail uh, indicating you change your branch and your lapel pin, which I'll hold up there for a moment. I hope that's in focus. And, of course, you should have all received your uh, fresh copy, special edition of Unfiltered as well, in the mail. Okay. Uh, that's the announcement side of the um, of the evening done. What I want to talk about tonight was blended malts, uh, and not not just any blended malt in particular. But um, well, sorry, I'm going to rephrase that. A blended malt in particular. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our, one of our latest releases, which is coming up soon for members, and I want to preview it here for you tonight. Give you some of my uh, impressions, some of my tasting notes, if you like, on Big Swirl, which is going to be released to members shortly. But before I get into that, before I even open it, I'll be, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I've not tasted this yet. I've not tasted anything of this yet. I tasted a work in progress of this, one of the additions that Ewan was working on as a sort of a side project thing. But this is a, um, this is the completed product, the, the final version, which he was most happiest with. So I'm going to talk more about that, uh, the Big Swell, in just a moment. That's the feature of tonight's video, talking about blended malts and talking about Big Swell. I'm going to just leave that there for a moment. Let's talk about what they are to begin with. Let's talk about the main categories. We've got blended whiskey. So blended whiskey still accounts for something like 90%, 88 to 90% of all whiskey production worldwide. So that's the likes of something like Johnny Walker. So I found a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue that's been sitting in my office for some time. Uh, when I say some time, you'll notice it's the old livery bottle. This one, I have, I've had this bottle for about 10 years. Uh, and it's a little bit higher proof than they bottle it these days, but it's a blend of our very rarest whiskies as it says on the label. Um, very cool little bottling, this one. Um, anyway, that's what that's what Blue Label used to look like. It doesn't look much different now. It's gotten a bit shinier on the label, I think. But um, <clears throat> uh, Public Holiday down in Tasmania, so no post today. Oh, yeah, it was Public Holiday in Tasmania and Melbourne today, and Victoria. So, yes, maybe no post today, but maybe tomorrow. Let's hope for tomorrow. Um, we sent it about a week ago, just by the way, we sent the, um, it would have been about a week ago, anyway, no, more than a week ago actually, I mean, anyway, a week and a bit ago. This is, this is Johnny Walker Blue Label. This is, uh, one of the more premium blended whiskies on the market. Um, like I said, the label looks a bit different these days, that's about what it used to look like about 10 years ago, still a bit left in this bottle, about half or so. Um, that's been sitting at the back of my cupboard for God knows how long. I haven't pulled this bottle out for more than five or six years at least. Um, but it's still great whiskey. I've put a replacement cork in it because I don't think the cork lasted as long as I would have hoped. <laughs> Where are my pens? Scott, uh, do I owe you some pens? Mate, I've got a fresh one for you here. Here you go. The Grace Hotel Sydney. There you go. There's a new pen. Um, ooh, look at this. A very cheap, nasty biro. <laughs> There's your pen, Scotty. Okay. Blended whiskey is a blend of malt and grain whiskey from two or more distilleries. Uh, so let's just clarify what that means. It's when, let's say, distillery Tininik and distillery um, Gervin blend together and you have a malt whiskey, you have a grain whiskey blended together to create a blended whiskey. 
Now, generally speaking, the higher proportion of good old malt in the whiskey means it's a better, it's a dearer blended whiskey, and the higher proportion of grain is a cheaper whiskey. It's much cheaper to produce grain whiskey than it is produced malt whiskey as, as a product, so therefore blended whiskey can be produced quite cheaply. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. Blue Label is not a cheap whiskey by any means. These days, it's about $180, $180, $100, $200, something like that for a bottle. I can't remember how much it was when I bought this one, probably about the same. Actually, I remember it would have been more. It's come down a bit in price. It would have been about 300 when I bought that. Um, but blended whiskey is a mixture, if we're talking about blended Scotch whiskey as a wording, is a mixture of blend, is a blend of two or more uh, distilleries, and then from, generally speaking, from malt and grain. And that's blended whiskey. Then we're gonna move over to, and in Diageo's case, Johnny Walker's case, uh, they have, I think they own, it's about a third of the distilleries in Scotland. So um, there's something like uh, 33, 34 distilleries owned by Diageo. I don't, don't quote me on that. Um, so they're gonna be pu pu drawing from all those distilleries to create these products. In some cases, it might be just two distilleries. It might be 10, it doesn't, it doesn't really, we don't really know. But it's all about creating a cons consistent uh, blended whiskey that is um, that is interesting and is consistent. Consistency is the key when it comes to these these kind of products. So then we move on to the second category of blended whiskey, blended malts. Now blended malts were big in the. Um, I've talked about all this before on the channel, but I'll just go over quickly now. Blended malts were big in the sort of. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to get the dates wrong, but I think there was a there was a fair amount of blended malt going around in the 1960s, uh, 1950s and 1960s. We saw a fair bit of blended malt. Um, it could have been, it, the label would have changed. I've, actually, I should have brought it out for this video. I've got an old bottle of a 1950s blended malt somewhere in here. I think it's in that cupboard over there, um, which is a, it has, normally says Highland cream on the label or uh, it's, you know, it's, it was just a mixture of cream. Highland cream used to be sort of like all cream whiskey would, it was a phrase often used to that tier of blended malts. In that case, it was mostly, um, uh, no, the name escapes me. I'll have to come back to that one. But look, um, a modern blend of malt might be something like Monkey Shoulder. There's no grain whiskey in this. It's just malt whiskey. So it's a bit of a, a dearer product to make, but it creates a richer, rounder flavor, generally speaking, um, without that grain base. The grain base can provide a nice backbone to a whiskey, but in some cases, if you just want that rich maltiness in the whiskey, something like Monkey Shoulder is inoffensive, good fun. Uh, look, it's not gonna, it's not gonna amaze your palate. It's not gonna be something overly interesting, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be something that you can smash into a few cocktails, enjoy on its own, however you want to drink whiskey. So there's two good examples of two very um, accessible and available different types of blended whiskey, blended whiskey and blended malt. At the society, as you know, everything we produce at the society is single cask, single malt. So from one distillery, one cask, as an example shown here, one dot two one four. There, indulge your sweet tooth malt of the month has sold out. I'm sorry. However, a few years ago, uh, those who have been members for a while might remember Exotic Cargo. Unfortunately, my bottle is empty, but that's the whole idea of good whiskey. It's meant to be drunk and enjoyed. Um, we released, a few, a few years ago, we released Exotic Cargo, which was our very first blended malt scotch whiskey. Trust me, there was so much furore over in the UK and US, especially a little bit in Australia as well, that the society was diluting, that we were losing our way, that we... We are, you know, it's like a blended malt. How dare the society do a blended malt? What, what travesty is this? And, and t the, the, uh, <laughs> the furor was quickly quelled uh, as soon as people opened their bottles of this and tasted what was within. It was supremely exciting. It was a full sherry maturation in first fill Spanish oak sherry hogsheads and bottled at 50% ABV, a very respectable proof there. And it was for member approval, as it said on the label. Uh, it was, as, I'll show that on the back label there, for member approval. Let's see if you can zoom in on that one a little bit there. Uh, make sure that all works out okay. Um, yes, for member approval, there we go. Bit of a grubby label, but this has been my um, water bottle for my indoor plant here. So it's, it's gone to good use, that bottle, but it's, I just want to keep it because it's a cool looking label. And it was a nice piece of society history right there. Uh, Great Beyond says, blended malts should be bigger than they are. No better way to make up for the shortcomings of a single malt than adding other bits. It's not just shortcomings, Ryan. It can be just an experiment in creating different flavors and finding out what works in a nice harmonious blend. A lot of people think that finishing whiskey or doing, you know, transferring whiskey from one cask to another is hiding inferior casks. That's not always the case. It sometimes might be, but it, it's if the end result works, the end result works. Sometimes it's just a case of changing the flavor profile if you've got a lot of one cask type. If the society were to stumble across something like 
uh, 30 casks of uh, second fill ex bourbon Glen Murray, for instance. It might be cool to put some of those into some white wine casks or just mess around with it rather than having just one, you know, a lot of the same cask type. But the same works for blended malts. I mean, it's a case of us working with um, the casks that we've got, blending some of them together, having a bit of fun with them. And so that was what Exotic Cargo was. Then, of course, the second one was Pete Ferry. Again, I don't have a spare bottle of this. I um, It's all gone. It's a 10-year-old blended malt, just like Exotic Cargo is 10 years old. A 10-year-old blended malt matured exclusively in ex-bourbon barrels from Speyside and Isla. So it was a kind of a peated blended malt. It was quite peaty, it was quite, but it was quite oily and viscous, this one. It was lovely whiskey. They were the first two. The third one that we got was Old Fashioned. Sorry, the third one we got was uh, Pete Ferry Batch 2, which is a seven-year-old. Fourth one was uh, Old Fashioned, and then which I didn't get because we didn't really get a heap of Old Fashioned. There wasn't a whole lot of it going around. It was a blended malt extra matured for a year in ex-IPA casks. That was fun. It was kind of spicy and charry and almost beery in a way. It was lovely. And now I'm proud to say that the next batch, Big Swirl and uh, Battle Axe, are going to be coming out very shortly. But tonight I want to talk about Big Swirl. So let's have, I'm just going to read, I'm going to pour this and let it open up for a moment and answer some of these questions. Um, Jorka, good to see you. Been a while. Is it true you can only drink uh, blends from a blender's glass? No, that's not true, Dram. Monday rant. <laughs> Dram, I know, you're, I know you're pulling my leg here. Um, <laughs> I do have a, a blender's glass um, somewhere in here. I could run and grab it, but I couldn't really... Uh, no, don't worry about it. I don't exactly know where it is. I keep saying that. I don't exactly know where anything is in this office sometimes. It is just a lot of stuff, something, a lot of whiskey, a lot of glassware, a lot of things kicking around in this office, so I do apologize. But it could, I could... I might try this next time in a blender's glass. I'm going to try it in one of our, uh, one of our SCS glasses for now. Um, are these blends made up of casks that haven't quite met panel approval at all? I'm sure there'd be some that would still be great with a touch of something else added and it makes sense to use it. It's not so much that they haven't met panel approval, it's just that they've been earmarked for a different project, uh, Joel. And that's that's you and tell, uh, that's from the horse's mouth. I mean, these, these are casks that weren't so much ever destined to be single casks. These were casks that were destined from project, from inception, from creation to be, to be uh, created into a blended malt. The same thing happened with exotic cargo. There was a blending, the blending of exotic cargo happened at a new make level. So the casks, and I, I know of a good proportion of what distillers were in this, the casks were blended at a new make level. So that's not like we're thinking, oh, well, they're blended. It's, it's maturing blended malt in cask. It's not mature, uh, blending together mature stocks. So therefore, it was created from inception to be a blended malt. The same with Big Swell and the same with most of our blended projects. By the way, there's so few of them. There's just, you know, bits and bobs here and there of the blender malts that we're producing. Single cask is still obviously our core focus, our benchmark for what we do. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Strath uh, is Curve. Uh, fine Shoes HK. Oh, Fine Shoes. Mr. Den 15. Uh, Nick Huzek. Last couple have been a bit disappointing. I hope this one's better. I hope, I'm sorry to hear that, Mold Official. Uh, I don't know which ones you think are disappointing. I mean, I, I, I think ba I, I preferred Pete Ferry Batch 1 over Batch 2, to be honest. I think the 10-year-old was a bit creamier, a bit maltier. Batch 2 was far bigger peated and even a little bit sharp. But it worked well with some, like, some bitey cheddar or, or something. It was very nice, but in a different way. I know at one point blends were much more common than single malts casks. Uh, do you think this is still the hot case on the whole? Yes. Whiskey steams. Unequivocally, yes. Blends are still much more common than single malt and single cask single malts. Uh, blended whiskey right now worldwide still takes up about 90% of the market. 90%. Like that's moved down from 96. And I think it's at one point it was like 88 last year or something. But it's, it revolves around 88 to 90% of all whiskey consumed worldwide is blended whiskey. Your Shivers Regals, your Ballantines, your Johnny Walkers, all of those com uh, combined are 90% of the whiskey market. And of course, you know, your William Lawson's and, and ones that we don't see in any Western countries that are massive in India and whatnot. Uh, exotic Cargo 10 was a beautiful, it was, you know what, the 10 year old Exotic Cargo was a ripper whiskey and I, I'm still kicking myself I didn't stash a few of them aside, but you know what, that's okay. They're meant to be in drunk and enjoyed as I said. So here we go, I'm popping the cork on the first bottle of Big Swirl in Australia and I'm going to be able to share this with all members uh, very shortly, we'll, we'll make an announcement, but it's a bit, it's a bit close to outturn, there's plenty still available from outturn. There's that sound. Uh, Alright, that's interesting, it's straight from the new make, I guess it has to be full maturation, yeah. Do you mean all whiskey or just Scotch whiskey? No, no, no. I mean all whiskey, Joel. I mean whiskey consumption worldwide. Single malt is is barely eight nine percent of it. Um, well, 
and I'm not in, sorry, I'm including, I'm just talking malts here. I'm not talking bourbons, corns, rice, etc. I'm not talking about American market. I'm just talking about malt whiskey worldwide is still 90% still blended. That's why if you consider the size of markets in single malt, that's still only eight or 9% of the market. And then Australian whiskey again is, you know, 0.001% and single cask, single malt whiskey, like what we do at the society is 0.001% or whatever it is as well. It's very, very, very small fractional stuff here. Uh, I'm going to pour a nice healthy measure of that so I can get a nice, see see how it sits in the glass, which is my excuse for a nice big dram. Um, you can tell it's got a lovely reddish hue to it. It's got a... I'm not going to tell you too much about it just yet. I'm just going to have a nose of that. It's very clean, very lovely. Like, I, was, I you know, sometimes when I'm uh, approaching a sherried whiskey, especially modern sherried whiskey, I'll be honest, uh, sometimes when I approach them, I'm like, oh... I'm just bracing myself for the sulfur. And I know that's a really like jaded way of looking at the world. I don't mean it to be. It's sort of like, is there going to be sulfur in this? Is it going to have that sort of, and when I say sulfur, those notes of sort of like, is it going to be good sulfur? Is it going to be that sort of like, uh, you know, machinery oil, um, train tracks, you know, steam trains, um, meat, like cured meats, and you know, meaty spirit, punchy meaty spirit sulfur. Or is it going to be, Cast sulfur, which can be a bit sort of cordite, fireworks, um, uh, burnt plastic, rotten egg. None of that in this. It's very clean sherry. <sighs> Lovely on the nose. Very, very, um, very powerful there at 50% though. I mean, it's got a lot of punch to it, which is great. Hmm. Oh yeah. That is stunning. Oh, wow. The finish on that. So it's, it's like, um, it's quite chewy. That's lovely. That's a really good whiskey. So it says here on the, on the front, it's a bl blended from a selection of sherry casks. I'll read the full blurb on the back here. Um, it says here, a uh, combination of whiskeys matured full term in first fill Spanish oak sherry casks as well as those matured in bourbon wood before over two years of marrying in first fill American oak sherry casks. So full sherry. The result is a dark fruit forward dram with a touch of spice mix, adding balance and complexity. We're delighted to present it to members of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Big swell. I get like a bit of like hardwood polish. Like, um, like it's, yeah, hardwood polish, which I like it like, you know, in a really lovely old house, hardwood polish. It's, there's, there's just that hint of like rum as well, like rum agricole, wet leaves. <sighs> Tiniest hint of like sesame oil, beef teriyaki. Very rich sherry though, very rich sherry. And I'm far richer than I thought because the color is, I'd say, you know, maybe half a shade lighter than uh, Exotic Cargo. So you sort of go, if you're comparing it to the other blended malts we've done in the sherried realm, you think it's going to be quite... Um, you know, maybe a little bit lighter on palate. It isn't at all. In fact, I, I, there's that color perception thing. We've talked about it before, but you know, the darker means it's going to be better, which is totally not true. And sometimes even just those ones that are a shade lighter than, than the previous edition or batch two, batch three, batch four, whatever they are in some releases are just far better whiskeys. They're far more balanced. Morky Moo Goods here. Fumo Cigars teasing us whilst we drew yet, drool. Sorry, yes, I am Fumo. Fumo Cigars, I had one of your lovely cigars um, uh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Like buttery milk chocolate. That's an absolute easy drinking dessert whiskey. Easy drinking dessert whiskey. Put it like that. You know what? That's fantastic. So this is what, this is what good blended malt can be. It can have that, um, I've just opened this just now. It might need a bit more time to settle down a bit in the glass. But having a, a rich sherry blended malt that you can um, jump into and enjoy uh, enjoy just a really easy uh, easy drinking uh, rich sherry whiskey makes for a really lovely um, experience. I know I'm waffling on a bit here, but the good thing about these um, these Heresy bottlings, these sort of side projects of ours, is that they're not meant to be um, they're not collectors' items. They're not meant to be ones that you you know tuck away for safekeeping or 
rare sort of you know single cask appreciation. They're meant to be open and enjoyed. And I'm proud to tell you that the price on this for Australian members is going to be very, very attractive. Um, we've worked very closely with the UK. We took a bigger allocation this time of this one. I think we've got 115, 120 bottles of this or something like that, um, which is super exciting. So it will be should be available for some time. Uh, although we've got a few thousand members, so a couple of thousand members, so you know we never you never know how how thirsty they are. I know that I'd probably want to keep uh, a couple of these aside for good drowning with friends. What are the tasting notes on Big Swell? Uh, Nick Huzek, good question. On the back here it says a classical sherry profile that bursts initially with red berry compote, wine gums, freshly brewed coffee, polished hardwoods. I said polished hardwood, exotic spice mix, toasted nuts. Brown toast spread and treacle walnut wine. That sounds good. A uh, bit of strawberry tobacco, muscovado sugar, rum agricole. I said that. Black cumin seeds, lemon peel, toasted wood, rye bread, and bitter chocolate. In the mouth, it's a big swirl of dark uh, of dried dark fruits, menthol tobacco, strawberry wine, red licorice, damp earth, roasted chestnuts, milk chocolate, butter mints, and fig rolls. Some reduction. Unleashes. Reduction is in like adding a few drops of water. I haven't done that yet. Old herbal liqueurs, mulled plum wine, and walnut cake. Uh, cola cubes, cherry syrup, and the lingering warmth of fruity red chili. I'm going to add a few drops of water to this because I just got asked what does this, how does this react with water? And I haven't added any yet, so I'm going to add a fair, just a nice dash to that. <laughs> I think there's more trumpet players than, than whiskey lovers in my um in my stream tonight. That's always fun. <laughs> Matt Tubman, good to see you. Andrew Power, good to see you. Trumpet players, just like it's they're like it's like um it's 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 like moths to a lamp with, with good whiskey. You know what? I'll be completely honest. It's not the most complex whiskey. It doesn't pretend to be. But it's like, for me, the dates and the figs and the dried fruits and the rich sherry profile makes that a very, very delightful, uh, um, makes for a very delightful whiskey and very, um, very easy dramming, good fun for a blended malt. Um, and that's, I think things like this are what make it really exciting that we can actually access these and have them on sale soon. Morky Mood, to answer your question, this will be available to members really shortly. We've not made it available just yet. Give it a, maybe a week or so. Outturn, Outturn's got a bit more to go on it because it's still, it's, Outturn was very popular even on Monday today uh, for people picking up a few more orders on the website. So anything else you want from Outturn, there's still plenty available. Like I said, there's three or four bottlings that have sold out completely, but it's still always the, the gems on the inside. The 77 for me, the 77.58 is absolutely fantastic, wakey wakey. And one I'd also keep an ear out for, there's four bottles left of 72.79. That's a delicious Chari 72, that one. So keep an eye out for that one as well. There's only four left on the website. Let, I'm glad we're able to have a chat about blended malts, about Big Swell coming up, and I'm gonna uh, leave it there for now. I really appreciate you everyone tuning in. I'll see you all again, I think tomorrow night. I haven't, I have actually, here you go, Tubman and Power. I have a trumpet gig on tomorrow night, so I'm gonna have to see what time I can fit this stream in. Otherwise, I'll catch you all tomorrow or Wednesday, and um, have a great evening, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.